Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. I hope everyone had a good, relaxing, and very safe Labor Day weekend. Uh, I know it's been a while since since we had a, a press availability, so this is going to uh, contain a, uh, more information than normal. I do want to start off with a little good news. Uh, FEMA has approved our request for additional parishes to qualify for critical needs assistance. Uh, they are Grant, Natchitoches, Rapides, Sabine, and Wynn. So that brings us to a total of 11 parishes that are qualified for critical needs assistance. And remember, this is that up to $500, or it is $500, that, that they will get out pretty quickly upon uh, registering with FEMA uh, if you qualify based on the answers you give to the questions. So as always, we continue to encourage people to go to disasterassistance.gov and apply for FEMA assistance. Additionally, um, this is related to the CARES Act now, Louisiana received $14.8 million uh, in assistance uh, through the CARES Act for saltwater fisheries that have been negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the application period begins on September the 14th and will remain open until October the 26th uh, to apply for the program uh, and to get information about the guidelines. Uh, visit the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries website at wlf.louisiana.gov and click on the CARES Assistance, I'm sorry, the CARES Act Assistance box. Obviously, this is a big help to our fishing community. Uh, we appreciate the federal assistance, uh, and we know it's not going to cover all of the losses that our seafood community has endured. And we're going to continue to work with our federal partners uh, to try to get more funding to help that community, which has suffered greatly from a number of different things over the last couple of years. Unfortunately, uh, and this is back to the, to the storm, we're at 26 storm-related deaths now in Louisiana. Uh, seven of these deaths have been related to storm cleanup, including people falling from roofs or being hit by the limbs or debris. So please be very careful when you're working on your house or property. Uh, take every precaution necessary to ensure that you're safe, stay hydrated, and take frequent breaks. And it looks now like we're not going to quite get the full benefit of the cold front that was supposed to push all the way down into the impacted area. Uh, that, that likely won't happen. There will be some additional rain over the next few days, but we won't be getting those low temperatures. Nine of the deaths are attributable to misuse of portable generators. So if you're using a generator, please make sure that you're uh, positioning it at least 20 feet away from your house in a well-ventilated area and that it's not near open doors, windows, uh, vents. Don't put it in your garage or your basement or anything like that. An update on the National Guard. They have just over 5,600 guardsmen activated presently in support of Hurricane Laura. Uh, and they have distributed five and a half million liters of water, 4.1 million MREs, 672,000 bags of ice, and 161,000 tarps. Today, the National Guard is supporting 28 points of distribution and three hubs. So that's a total of 31 sites across eight parishes. We have some good news on the power outage. You remember at the peak, it was 615,000 accounts or customers without power. Uh, those outages have largely been located, uh, I'm sorry, we're down to 137,921 uh, as of noon today. Uh, and those outages are largely located in the Southwest region of the state. Unfortunately, progress will be slower uh, going forward than it has been up to now in reducing those numbers just because of the sheer devastation uh, to the infrastructure in southwest Louisiana. So as a, as a result, uh, please be aware of boil water advisories and other public health alerts uh, that we'll be sending out through local radio and TV broadcasts. If you have questions about the safety of your water, contact your water system. If you don't have that information, you can always call 211. 
Uh, it is uh, important to be extra careful when preparing your food if you have trouble accessing water or clean water. Uh, LDH updates this list of water system outages and bore water advisories on its, well, uh, on its website at ldh.la.gov slash safe drinking water. At present, there are 48 storm-related water outages affecting a population of more than 15,000 people, and that's five fewer outages uh, just since yesterday. There are 93 bull advisories out there for water systems, um, and the situation is currently uh, improving. There are more than, uh, I'm sorry, there are 108 public water systems that have been cleared uh, from their boil advisories. So, so we do make, we, uh, we are making good progress there. Uh, the CPRA has been working to facilitate additional drainage of flood waters in Cameron Parish. They've completed their emergency operation to cut a levee along the lower Mermital River. Uh, they did that yesterday and water is now flowing out into the Gulf of Mexico. Additionally, uh, pumping operations continue in the Creole and Cameron areas of Cameron Parish and observations from gauges are indicating falling water levels in that region. As of today, there are 12,730 people being sheltered in the state of Louisiana. The vast majority of these, 12,607, uh, were in non-congregant shelters, uh, principally 42 hotels. Um, and those hotels are in the New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Shreveport areas, with the vast majority being in New Orleans. If you need shelter, please text LA Shelter to 898 211. That's LA Shelter to 898 211 for information about where to go. We received word uh, today that DCFS has federal approval uh, to provide disaster SNAP benefits, and this is uh, a nutrition benefit, SNAP. Uh, for those who are not uh, on SNAP currently. Uh, and this will take place in the 16 parishes that have been approved for individual assistance. Um, in light of COVID, this will be a different uh, SNAP process. Uh, DSNAP is gonna be virtual uh, and individuals will not have to apply in person. Uh, there will be more information forthcoming uh, very soon, so please stay tuned and we are tracking, uh, turning that on on September the 10th. In the meantime, if you're not currently receiving SNAP benefits and you've been impacted by Laura, we do encourage you to go ahead and pre-register for DSNAP now. You can text LADSNAP to 898-211 for information on how to register. LADSNAP to 898-211 for information on how to register. This will speed your application, and please remember, if you're already on SNAP, you do not have to apply. Uh, for those 4,500 or so Louisianans who continue to shelter in Texas, um, the Texas officials and the American Red Cross will continue to reserve hotel rooms for you and your families and provide other needed assistance. Uh, call 888-991-5229 to confirm your parish and to register for accommodations. Uh, we're very grateful to Gov Governor Abbott and the people of Texas. And it's very important that uh, Louisiana's evacuees in Texas continue to accept uh, those offers for rooms uh, because we are, we are just about at capacity with the rooms that we have under contract at, at hotels here in Louisiana. Um, and, and so they have the space in Texas, so we're encouraging you to stay there. If you come to Louisiana, um, at least for some period of time, you're, you're likely to be in a congregate shelter, which we really don't want you to be, and that would be at the Alexandria Mega Shelter until we could locate you a hotel room. And again, those are in short supply now, so we're asking you to stay where you are. Uh, for up-to-date sheltering information, remember it's LA Shelter to 898 211. Uh, getting back to the COVID situation, there are some parents who missed their chance to apply for pandemic EBT, and this is back in the May or June time period. Uh, there's another uh, period of time in which they can uh, apply for those benefits. 
Uh, the Department of Education and the Department of Children and Family Services are reopening the PEBT application portal for, uh, portal for three weeks, and that starts today. And this is for families of children who receive free or reduced meals at school, but they didn't apply for PEBT during the initial offering. They now have until September the 29th uh, to apply. Uh, this includes those who attend a community eligibility provision school where all children receive free and reduced price meals regardless of income. Uh, families who received PEBT during the May-June application period are not eligible. This is not a new benefit. This is the same benefit, but it's being uh, opened up again for those people who did not take advantage of it uh, previously. You apply on the Department of Education website at louisianabelieves.org. And again, you have until September the 29th. We estimate that there were 264,000 or so students who did not apply the first uh, time when that window opened in the spring. Uh, more than 470,000 did receive benefits. Uh, I would like to make sure that people understand that PEBT is not SNAP. It doesn't affect SNAP benefits. It's not related to loss from Hurricane Laura. Its uh, eligibility is based solely on the student's participation in the free or reduced price meal program. And these are one-time benefits of $285 per child. Um, and what that is is $5.70 per day per child for 50 days of schools that, uh, that were missed and those meals were not provided. It's a program authorized by Congress as part of the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, the, the CARES Act of 2020. Uh, with respect to COVID, um, today's numbers, uh, we are reporting 250 new cases on 4,125 tests. Now, you know, that's a low number of tests, and that's a low number of cases as well. Uh, that's about a quarter of the tests that we would normally report. Uh, we think that that's probably related to two things. One, it was a holiday weekend, um, and so the reporting may not be complete. But secondly, because it was a holiday weekend and because we continue to recover from Hurricane Laura, it's likely that our testing was not as robust as we want it to be either. Uh, this is something we've been talking about for a while now, and we really need to get um, our individuals back into our community and surge testing sites. They are open around the state today. They'll be, um, be opening uh, more and more sites um, over the coming days as well. Unfortunately, we're also reporting 13 new deaths uh, for a total of 4,955. There are 799 inpatients. These are individuals in hospitals across the state of Louisiana with COVID-19. That's an increase of 12 uh, from the day before. Uh, and we have seven more people on ventilators uh, than before uh, with 131 total. Uh, I am aware that the phase two executive order expires Friday. Um, we will have a decision for you uh, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Uh, I will have my gating criteria meeting later this afternoon. And we also have a White House Coronavirus Task Force call tomorrow, and we're waiting for their weekly update on state-specific data uh, and recommendations. So obviously we'll have a decision before you before Friday, um, and, and uh, we're not gonna rush that decision, and I'm not gonna get into that today. Um, as I close, um, we've declared September the 9th as Louisiana Census Day where we're gonna make a robust push to get people to complete their census forms. It really is critical that everyone participates. It just takes a few minutes to fill out a form. Uh, it will impact our state uh, for the next 10 years in areas of education, healthcare, transportation infrastructure, congressional representation, and so much more. And it's important that everyone is counted. Our self-response rate is far too low right now at 58.6%. Uh, the total response is just over 80%. Uh, it's one of the lowest percentages anywhere in the country. Uh, so we are asking people to, to take a few minutes, complete their, their census form. You can go to my2020census.gov. That's my2020census.gov, or you can call 844-330 2020 to find out more information and fill out your uh, form. 
So with that, I will take some questions. Yes, sir. Well, yesterday was Labor Day, um, and while we had a UCG meeting, uh, we did we did scale it back. Uh, we're uh, waiting. We also don't have this, the uh, state-specific data recommendations that came from the uh, that come weekly from the White House Coronavirus Task Force. That uh, typically comes on a Sunday. Uh, today is Tuesday. We don't we don't yet have it. Uh, and I haven't yet had my gating criteria meeting where we look at the, the criteria that's called for under the reopening guidelines. Um, but the, the order expires Friday. There will be a decision well in advance of Friday. And it'll be, it'll be based on the data and, and on the recommendations that we, that we have from the, the White House as to how we proceed. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, well, first of all, my, my thoughts are in line with the other schools. I don't know that there's a difference of opinion between myself and, and LSU on, on the percentage the, the, of capacity that will be allowed. And that's the way I've seen it expressed, not so much in terms of a, of a number of people who will be allowed in the stadiums around the SEC, but as a percentage of the capacity. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, I'm looking at, at 25%. But understanding that whatever decision we make today or whatever announcement we make today, it's always going to be subject as to what's going on with respect to COVID between now and then uh, as to whether it remains that. And certainly we, we want to be able to uh, uh, make an announcement that will hold true uh, for, I think it's September 26th, right? The, the Mississippi State game. Yeah, and, and so, but we're, we're working through that and, and there's, there's some time to, to get that exactly right. But um, I don't know that there's that there's a, a difference of opinion. I, I just think there hasn't uh, been an announcement yet, and I suspect one's coming out uh, pretty quickly. Um, for somebody that says uh, uh, that's, that that would be a low percentage, um, I, I think it's the ultimate concern with the pack too many people to attend. Yeah. Well, it's it's twenty five percent, but twenty five percent of ninety something thousand is a lot of people, right? And and so I mean that's the concern, and and I think it's a percentage that is consistent with the vast majority of other SEC um, uh, announcements. And uh, you know I will point out that that our state has had more cases per capita than any of the others. Uh, that we've already ridden the crest of two surges. I'm not anxious to do it a third time. Um, and so we're, we're going to make prudent decisions based on, on where we are as a state. Uh, and I think it's, it's always useful to look at what other states are doing, but it's not necessarily something that we feel bound to follow in terms of, of what they're doing. Yes, sir. I do. I think it's important to be as safe as we can possibly be, um, and, and that includes at school where you have plenty of faculty and staff, not just kids. And, and I haven't seen studies that say that kids don't get the disease. They typically have um, not, not quite as, as bad an experience with it, obviously, and, and, and quite often they will remain asymptomatic. Uh, but in, in order to have our schools be as safe as possible for everyone, including the students, the staff, the faculty. Uh, I think it's important that, that we embrace the, the CDC guidelines, which includes 
those around mask usage. Um, and, and I know that that's something that the uh, Bessie board included uh, in the uh, guidelines that they put forward uh, relative to some legislation that was passed. Um, I think it was Buddy Mincy's bill, Representative Buddy Mincy's bill, uh, to, to prescribe some guidelines for our schools uh, and, and to try to get them to do things that were consistent with those best practices to minimize the transmission of the disease and so forth and make that school environment as, as safe as it can be uh, in exchange for which uh, the, the schools also get some liability protections as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so the elections obviously is, is going to be challenging. We've got the COVID situation. We've got the hurricane. The, the court hearing uh, over the election deals with the emergency plan related to COVID. Uh, obviously, I thought uh, for the reasons I stated that the Secretary of State's uh, proposed plan um, just contravened too many CDC guidelines uh, relative to protecting people uh, and and would, would cause them to have to make a very hard decision. Are they gonna unnecessarily expose themselves or others uh, to the virus in contravention of those guidelines or are they gonna uh, uh, forfeit on, on their right to vote? And there's no reason to do that, uh, especially since all we have to do is, is go forward with the plan that we implemented in both July and in August, uh, where they, they have increased opportunities to ask for a mail ballot uh, because they're symptomatic because they're under quarantine, uh, because they are um, uh, more vulnerable to disease uh, by virtue of one of those comorbid health conditions that we've been talking about so long. Uh, so that was obviously a, a, a plan that was submitted by the uh, Secretary of State that I just couldn't support. And so the, the federal court will, will decide that. At the same time, we are working with the Secretary of State uh, to create a task force uh, to make decisions and, and to uh, uh, make available voting precincts in the area that has been most heavily affected. So it isn't just a function of restoring power, it's making sure that you have enough places that are actually suitable uh, to, to serve as voting precincts. And, and the, the first meeting of that task force will be this week. And so these are two separate issues. Um, those individuals who might still be, and, and we don't know what the case is going to be as we get closer to the election, but those individuals who might still be in a shelter and not home, uh, they have the traditional absentee ballot means to get their ballot. They, they can just check the box saying they're not going to be in the parish on election day. Uh, and we're going to try to make sure that anyone uh, who is in a shelter as we approach election day, they have an opportunity to request the absentee ballot. But when you get down into places like Cameron and Calcasieu and Vernon and Beauregard and so forth, uh, regular polling locations may have been damaged to the point where they just can't serve that function. And so we got to figure out where we can, where we can actually uh, have these voting precincts uh, in enough time to get uh, the information to voters so they know where to go uh, in order to vote. And that's not necessarily limited to election day. That could potentially uh, be for early voting as well. And so we've, we've got a task force that's going to be meeting this week uh, to, to try to work through all of that. And, and I will tell you, we have multiple state agencies who, who are going to be participating uh, in the task force, and, and we're going to work that issue hard with the Secretary of State so we can hopefully get all of that ironed out. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, it's troubling uh, to see that people are doing what, what we know to be unsafe. In fact, the very activities that um, cause the second surge, really you can go back to Memorial Day and, and see where those activities really uh, fuel that second surge, especially when, when it um, started 
with with much higher uh, case rates in in people 18 to 29, and then and then it got exported beyond those uh, to other citizens, including older citizens and those who are vulnerable. Um, it, look, I understand that that people don't like the the uh, the protocols, the mitigation measures, the restrictions that are in place because of COVID, but they're there for a reason. Uh, we are following uh, the recommendations that we get from, from the White House Coronavirus Task Force. We're looking at the data, um, and everything that, that we have in place is consistent with that. Um, and and what I know is the degree to which we're going to be successful in opening up more and more of our economy, um, our churches and, and schools and universities, and being able to leave them open without undue interruption um, is going to be determined by the degree to which people wear masked and, and, and socially distanced and wash their hands and stay home when they're sick and reduce their activity. There's, there's nothing um, that's magical about that. There's nothing that's, that's hard to understand. We've been talking about this for a very, very long time. Um, and so it's my hope uh, that, that more and more Louisianans will comply with this. And that's really sort of the new normal until such time as there is a vaccine. Uh, that is uh, mass produced and administered in enough people uh, so that we can get back uh, fully to normal. Uh, and you know, I continue to urge people to do what's required. And by the way, um, we can add something to the list now as we're, we're getting into flu season. It's really important that people get a flu shot uh, because people with the flu uh, tax the same portion of our healthcare delivery system as people with COVID. It's a respiratory based ailment. Um, and, and so we really need people to get the flu shot so we have as few flu cases as possible this year. Um, and that will help us to be able to make sure that we can have the hospital capacity to meet the needs of everyone, not just those with flu and COVID, uh, but you know, an ICU bed is an ICU bed. And if it's, if it's filled with someone with flu or with COVID, then it's not available for somebody who gets, um, uh, has a stroke or gets in an accident uh, or something like that. So. All of this is really, really important, and we continue to stress it. And we're not the only ones. Uh, everything that I just told you is fully consistent with what's coming out of the White House Coronavirus, ta coronavirus Task Force and Dr. Burks and so forth. Uh, so, so we're asking the people of Louisiana to take this very seriously. Yes, ma'am. Well, the question is, how tough has the hurricane been on families with young children? I extremely uh, tough. Uh, look, it's, it's a challenge under these environments uh, with education regardless, because even when school districts are open, many of them are not open uh, full time for in-person instruction. So at least some of that's going to be virtual. For some school districts, it's, it's, um, it's all virtual, at least in certain grades. That was always going to be challenging, but now you have um, people with, with children who are home needing to resume their education, but you also have all the nutrition uh, needs that you have to satisfy, uh, all while you hopefully are trying to repair your home. Uh, and, and it's just extremely uh, tough. Uh, I will tell you, when we were in New Orleans the other day, meeting with the people who've been um, uh, sheltering there, uh, I was able to, to talk with a number of, of young uh, children and, and their parents. Um, and and you know, I was uh, very appreciative of the efforts that the city of New Orleans and all of those volunteers and those agencies are making to make that experience as, as uh, good as it can possibly be for those individuals and some tremendous works going on. But at the same time, it is a very, very challenging process uh, for, for all of those folks. And the sooner we can get power restored, get people back into their homes, get, get life more back to normal, uh, the better off all of those individuals are going to be. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a, a real challenge. And, and I appreciate the, the, the questions, you know, that, that, that you've asked about this. Um, and, and obviously we want to lift these people up. We want to continue to encourage the, the nonprofit sector, the private sector, the, the faith community to, to step up because they're doing just tremendous work as well. Um, and then much of what we've been talking about today with the, um, with the pandemic EBT, the PEBT program, uh, and the DSNAP, 
uh, th that, those programs are also designed to help take care of some of those needs. Um, but there's nothing that beats a return to normalcy as much as, as, much as you can have. Um, and and uh, again, we're not going to be fully back to normal because of COVID-19, but these young people certainly didn't need Hurricane Laura uh, compounding uh, their problems. Yes, sir. I don't have any second thoughts about the way we've handled it because we've handled it in accordance with uh, the science, uh, the recommendations that we've been getting from healthcare professionals, epidemiologists, and others. Um, and every decision that we've made has been consistent with the White House Coronavirus Task Force and their recommendations and guidelines. Um, and the, one of the good news, one of the good news pieces about uh, the flu, is that the mitigation measures that we have in place for COVID-19 also work. Uh, with respect to the flu. Uh, so social distancing is a way to prevent the flu from, from spreading uh, as much as it would otherwise. The mask, the washing of hands. Uh, and, and that's not just theory, because when we had the original um, surge in Louisiana and elsewhere uh, back in March, we were still in flu season. And we saw when we put the mitigation measures in place overnight, the cases of the flu dropped considerably, which was very, very helpful because the cases of COVID surged, as, as we all know. So, so that, is, that is some good news, actually, is that the mitigation measures that we have in place for COVID actually work uh, very well to reduce the, the spread of the flu. Something as simple as just not shaking hands um, greatly reduces the transmission rate of, of the flu. So, um, look, I want to thank all of you for continuing to cover this. Christina, what time are we going to have a first probably at 11:30 tomorrow, uh, and that's because in the afternoon I, I do have the White House Coronavirus Task Force call, so we'll do the we'll try to do this UCG um, in the morning early enough to to get out and do a press conference with you all at 11:30. If that changes, we will certainly let you know. And thank you all very much.